Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are continuing with topic one in integrated math one. So today we're going to learn a new lesson titled one dash two equations with variables on both sides. And we're going to split this lesson into two days. Well, before we go into this lesson, there's something that you need to know before the actual lesson. So this is the review paper. So I'm going to put this paper on the side and just concentrate ourselves on the review. So the things that you have to know is you have to know how to solve multi-step equations. Something like um, 2 multiplied by the quantity of 2x plus 4, close parentheses, is equal to 10. Okay. Um, when you have this multi-step equations, the first thing is there's actually two ways to do it. You could, um, I'm going to show you two methods. Either method number one is you could distribute, right? So if I were to rewrite this question or the equation, the first thing is I will distribute the 2 from the outside to the 2x and the positive 4 inside. So 2 times 2x, you double that, you get 4x. And then 2 times positive 4 is positive 8. So you put plus 8 is equal to 10 like this. Then from there, it becomes a two-step equation. So you subtract 8 on both sides because it's positive 8. So I'm using something called subtraction property of equality. So I'm just going to write it on the side. Subtraction property of equality. Then from there, you, uh, positive x and negative x cancel, so this is gone. So you're left with 4x on the left, and then 10 minus 8 is 2. So the next line in the equation is 4x is equal to 2. Then since you have a 4 multiplied by x and you want to get rid of the 4, you're going to do the opposite operation, which is dividing. So you're going to divide by 4 on both sides. Then on the left side of the equation, you're left with the variable x. And then 2 divided by 4. Now, 2 cannot divide by 4 entirely because it's going to be a fraction. Remember, your, divi your, divide your divisor is greater than your dividend. So it's not going to come out to be a integer or a whole number. So you're going to write 2 over 4. But then you're going to check to see, make sure that you're able to simplify or reduce the fraction. So 2 over 4, when you reduce it, it becomes 1 over 2. That means x is equal to 1 half. I would prefer you to write your answer as a fraction and not as a decimal, unless the question itself, the problem itself, originally starts with decimals. Otherwise, you leave your answer as a fraction. Well, that's the first way to do it. Well, your second way is this. Let me recopy the problem. Instead of doing distributive properties, since you have a 2 multiply, right, it's a multiplication between the 2 and this quantity, the sum quantity, you're able to divide the entire equation by 2 to get rid of this. So 2 divided by 2, it's gone. So you're left with 2x plus 4 is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5, like this. Then you're going to have a different step compared to the method number 1. But you do the same process. You subtract 4 on both sides because there's a positive 4. So these positive 4 and negative 4 cancel. So you're left with 2x on the left. And then 5 minus 4 is 1. And then from there, since you have a 2 next to the x, you're going to divide both sides by 2. And then since 2 cannot go into 1 evenly, you're going to write as a fraction. So x is equal to 1 half. So both ways, it will get you the same answer. And if you don't believe that these are the correct answers, simply plug it back in to the original equation. So the way that you check is the following. So to check is just plug it back in. You rewrite the original equation. So 2 and 2 times half plus 4 is equal to 10. And then you use order of operations to simplify. So half of 2 is 1. So you have 2 multiplied by 1 plus 4 is equal to 10. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5. So 2 times 5 it does equal to 10. So everything checks out, everything works perfectly. So that's how you could check your answer to the equation. Well, now we're getting into the lesson. Uh, the title is 1-2 equations with variables on both sides, and this is day one of the two days. So it's going to be very, very similar from the equations that we have seen, except that you're going to you're going to see letters on both sides of the equations. So let me give you an example. 
example one. Maybe I should use blue. So let's say in example one, you have something like 7x plus 3 is equal to 5x plus 14 minus 5. Well, you have this equation. If it makes you feel comfortable, you could draw a line, a divider in the middle of the equal sign. But you don't have to if you're able to do without it. So first you check, are there any like terms that you could combine on either side of the equations? Well, on the left side, I see 7x plus 3 and there's no like terms, so I don't have anything to simplify. But on the right side, I see that 14, positive 14 and negative 5 are like terms. So therefore, you're going to combine it, so you keep the left side the same. And then the right side, you do 14 minus 5, and it'll get you 9, which is a positive 9. You notice that there are two um, x's. There are x on the left and an x on the right. One of them is 7x, the other one is 5x. Well, here's the news for you. Not only that you could add or subtract numbers on both sides, you're able to add or subtract terms on both sides as well. You could add or subtract letters or the entire term. So between a 7x and 5x, I would prefer you to make your work clean or cleaner. I would subtract the smaller coefficient. So between a 7x and a 5x, the smaller one is 5x. So I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So minus 5x, minus 5x like this. Then the 5x and negative 5x will cancel. So if 7x minus 5x, you're left with 2x plus 3 is equal to 9. Boom, now you're left with a two-step equation. From here, it's easy to uh, continue to solve the equation. You subtract 3 on both sides. I'm doing the subtraction property of equality. So you cancel that. You're left with 2x is equal to 9 minus 3 is 6. And then from there, you cut 2x in half, and you cut the 6 in half. So you're left with x is equal to 3. Okay. So it's just one extra step before... Um, the first step you've, that you've been doing in multi-step equation. This is the only extra steps that you have to do, right? If you see two letters on both sides of the equation, you subtract the smaller one. So between 7 and 5x, you subtract the 5x on both sides, okay? Well, we're going to take a look at fractions first, right? Um, in the past, I'm going to put example 2. In the past, you have seen something called proportion. Proportion. It means a fraction equal to a fraction. That's the meaning of proportions. Something like this. If you have 9 multiplied by the quantity of y minus 1 all over 3 is equal to 6 multiplied by the quantity of y plus 3 all over 10. Well, I see that the left side is a fraction, a very complicated fraction, and on the right side is also a very complicated fraction. So there's two ways to do it. If I were you, I would uh, first get rid of the parentheses by doing distributive property like this, right? And you're going to do it on both sides of the equations at the same time. So the left side is 9y minus 9 all over 3 is equal to 6y plus 18 all over 10 like this. Then now that you have no more parentheses, in the past you learned that if you have a fraction equals to a fraction, you're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to put an x in the middle of the equal sign. So I'm going to put 3 multiplied by this on the left of the equation. So you have 3 multiplied by the quantity of 6y plus 18. And then the other side you're going to do 10 times this quantity, which is 10 multiplied by 9y minus 9 like this. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you have to do distributive property one more time. So you're going to multiply this and this, right? So you do one more time. So 3 times 6 is 18y. And then 3 times 18, I have no idea. So I need to use my calculator. And let's see. So that would be 3 times 18, and which is 54. So the answer is 54. Okay. Um, 54 and then 10 times 9y is 90y minus 90. Well between this y and this y I'm going to subtract the smaller one which is 18y like this okay so you're left with 54 is equal to 90 minus 18. What is that equal to? Um, so I'm going to do so on this, I'm going to do what's 90 minus 18. Oops, I pressed it incorrect, which is 72. 
So we're going to put 72y minus 90. You notice that the numbers are larger, but that's okay. The steps will be the same. And then, so 54 plus 90 would be 144 is equal to 72y. And then when you divide both sides by 72, we're going to use a calculator. So y is equal to, and then you do 144 divided by 72. 144 divided by 72, and your answer is 2. That means my final answer for this equation is 2. Okay. And then one last example, one last example, example 3, will be what happens when you have one side with uh, a fraction only and the other side has no fraction. Something like this. 8 multiplied by the quantity of 2 minus k all over 7 is equal to negative k. Something like this. Well, if you have one side without a fraction, simply going to make it a fraction. So put it over 1, so that way you have two fractions. A fraction equal to a fraction. So you do 7 multiplied by negative k on one side, right, because we're going to cross multiply them. And then the other side will be 1 times 8, um, 1 times 8, and then a quantity of 2 minus k, like this. Well, 1 times 8 is just 8. So on the right side is 8 multiplied by the quantity of 2 minus k. And then 7 times negative k is just saying that it's 7 times negative 1, which is negative 7, and then just stick a k on the back of it. Then from here, everything just becomes multi-step equation. So you do 8 times 2, which is 16 on the right side, and then 8 times negative k is negative 8k. And then on the left side is negative 7k. Well, remember, between the two coefficients, negative 7 and negative 8, we're going to eliminate the smaller one. We know that negative 8 is smaller than negative 7, so we're going to eliminate that by adding 8k on both sides, like this. And then when you cross it out, it's negative 7 plus positive 8 is just 1k is equal to 16. Well, 1k equals to 16, it's just equivalent to saying k is equal to 16. So this is all that you have to learn for the first day of solving equations with variables or letters on both sides. Thank you. Hey everyone, so to get to your homework first, you go to my CNUSD website and then you click on the top of the page, my CNUSD to log in. Well, you're going to type in your username and your password. Well, in this case, your student ID and your password. Then you go on to resource. I think for you guys it's resource. And then you go to a place called uh, Pearson Savas Easy. Pearson Savas Easy. I'm not quite sure how you say that word, but it's Pearson Easy. Click on that. And you get to this uh, pop-up page and you're going to click on your class textbook. So you click on this right here. This, called, this is called Envision Integrated Mathematics 1 2009 Common Core. You click on that, it will, a new window pop up again, and you'll see three different colors. The green color is your online textbooks. I teach from this textbooks. So if you don't have a copy, an actual copy, you could always go to here and click on the uh, appropriate sections that we're teaching. But to find your online homework, you look at the reddish, orangish, um, box in between uh, in the middle it's called classes so you're going to click on here click on classes and depending on which of uh, which period you're in um, there will be new assignments here so you're going to click on the assign click into the assignments and then do your homework and then that's it well inside the homework there are problems for you to work on which allow you three attempts before they give you the final answer so for example, for this problem, if you accidentally got a wrong answer, it will tell you keep trying. Then you type in another answer, and if it's wrong, then it'll, add, then it'll give you one more chance. And the third time that you got it wrong, it will tell you the answer right away. So, uh, but you could always get help by viewing an example on this part of the uh, uh, feature. So it will tell you what to do step by step, step by step, step by step until the final answer. So you could always refer to the question, help view an example, or you could use help me to solve this to actually uh, work it step by step. So there will be more answer boxes for, for you to fill in, but at least it will help you on your learning. Now for this problem, what do you do when you get it wrong, right? So well, to get a point or to get scores on that homework, then you click on similar questions and you keep practicing and keep practicing until you get it right. 
So if I were to click on similar questions, you notice that the questions changed. It's different from the previous one. So let's say this time you got it right. Let's say you, uh, x is equal to 5, right? Well, if you got it right, it will tell you well done, OK, and then you move on to the next problem. So you click on next to move on to the next problem like this. And once you finish all the problem, I believe the next thing is for you to make sure that you answer all the questions. If there's anything that it's not answered, make sure that you go back and look at it like this, right? So this is not answered. But let's say assume that if you finish your um, all of the questions on your homework, then you go to the bottom, I believe. Oh, actually, this button right here says submit my work. So you click on it and then boom, I only got 3% just because I only answered one question correct, the rest I did not answer. So in order for you to get at least 80% or any good scores, make sure that you answer every single question and it's correct, not incorrect, for you to get as many points as possible on your homework. If you have any questions, please contact me.